Hey there, Philip here, and this is the last workday before Christmas for me. And I mean, it's Friday, so um, it's probably for many other people as well. And today I really needed some good news, okay? And so for, for various reasons, but I just needed good news. And so I went out and found an article that summarizes a bunch of good news about the last year. And I was surprised. There's a bunch of really amazing stuff happening in the world that I wasn't aware of at all. And so I thought mm, maybe other people would like to know as well. And so I can make this presentation <laughs> from that article. The article is at futurecrunch.com slash goodnews2023. I'll link it below. But uh, I'm just going to go through my favorite stuff from there. Um, so before I start, though, two things. First, why don't we learn about good news? I am a master's. I have a master's degree in journalism. And uh, so I know that in journalism, for something like 100 years, a very common phrase was to say, bad news are good news, good news are no news. This is kind of like a common knowledge for journalists. If you have bad news, that's good. <laughs> I mean, it's good for business. If you have good news, like there's no need to report them because people will not care. And that unfortunately still applies. Like if you want to sell newspapers or online subscriptions or anything like that, uh, if you report good news, people will stop caring. People always talk about how they want to, to hear more good news and about how we should all, you know, have more good news in media and stuff like this. But in the end, they just don't tune in, you know, like they will tune in to the bad news instead. Um, so we kind of have to, it's on us. We have to um, focus on the bad news. Uh, I mean, on the, on the good news, uh, because our brains are tuned to uh, be more excited about bad news. You know, like in the bad way, of course. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is, uh, as I will go through the good news, it is human nature for you to be like, but, you know, for every good news, there's this thing in us that says, well, but it's not that, you know, simple. Or, yeah, but on the other hand, there's this other bad news. And so I think this, this is natural. Um, and I just want to make it completely clear that I realize that not everything is hunky-dory. <laughs> I, um, I think that we can all agree that it's possible to have both good news that are true and bad news that are true at the same time. And that's just how life is, you know, that we have to deal with it. Um, by Talking about good news, I'm not saying that the bad news don't exist. Okay, so I just wanted to, uh, you know, say it out loud. All right, so poverty is declining. And I mean, it's been declining for decades. It went up because of the pandemic, but, but now it's declining again. More than half of countries say that they will see poverty declining. Um, and uh, like, that's, that's great. <laughs> uh, more girls are getting an education. Uh, there is 50 million, 50 million more girls in school this year than in 2015. Uh, that's also good. Also, the completion rates are increasing. So it's not that they just go to school and they, they have to uh, leave because of cultural reasons. No, uh, we will have more educated women. Fewer teenage girls uh, are getting married, uh, which is like, this is from India for in 15 years ago, it was 46% of teenage girls under 18 uh, were married by their 18th birthday. And now it's only 23%. Again, big win for just 
I think the the whole of humanity. Uh, then there, this is going to be controversial, but this is not from the article, but the lower poverty and uh, s a lower child mortality rates and stuff like this, it all kind of comes into this um, uh, this process of depopulation. Like, like the population of the world is still increasing, but we now know from statistics that it will stop increasing in, I think, like a decade or something like that. And then it will gradually go down everywhere. Not just the, you know, Western economies or anything like that, not just South Korea and Japan. Everywhere it will go down slowly. And that, of course, is a big bad problem because civilization is not used to like human uh, civilization is not used to having more old people than young people and so there will have to be big changes but if and I'm, I'm pretty sure that humanity can manage somehow if that works then we have the same amount of earth for fewer people uh, which I think is good. Um, less competition between people, uh, same amount of you know progress and everything, but now for for fewer people and for a slowly declining population. Uh, it's not going to be you know that like it's not going to reach zero anytime soon. I don't worry, but it's just not going to um, increase like crazy as as it had in the previous you know hundred years or something like that. So to me, this is good news, um, but you have to think about it before it gets good. Decline of tax havens. That was another um, uh, surprise for me. It 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 was um, I think in twenty fifteen, nine percent of all GDP in the world was in tax havens, like all these like little countries that um, really, you know have small populations, but somehow every big company is in them. Um, and they have their headquarters in them because of tax um, uh, reasons. And so this has decreased to 3% this year. And there are some new resolutions that will make it uh, go even lower in the future. So so good, good news for people who want to, uh, you know, pay about as much taxes as big corporations. Uh, U.S. economy is strong, even if you're not in the U.S., like I'm not in the U.S., but it's always good to, to know that like U.S. economy is strong because it's the biggest economy in the world. So, you know, it's it's uh, if, it, if it goes downhill, then a lot of other people or other countries will go down as, as well. So even if you're not like a big fan, if you're like a Chinese communist, uh, you still rationally should be rooting for the US economy. Um, so, and like this is news for me as well. In 2022, economists predicted that like US would be going into a recession, but now like there's GDP growth, very strong. Uh, the unemployment rate is very low. Uh, average wealth uh, went up actually for everyone, but uh, especially for uh, Americans age 18 to 34, which is, again, surprising to me because like young Americans, if you were looking into on like meme sites, it looks like young Americans are very not doing well uh, in terms of money. Uh, and I'm sure many of them are doing really badly in terms of money, but it's not, it, it's not all bad. Fewer murders. Okay, so it's like according to the World Bank, uh, this is um, for how long? This is from 2001 to 2021, so 20 years. Okay, uh, but still in Europe it's minus 72 uh, percent, and in all other places in the world, uh, I don't have um, Australia, but but um, but in all the places in the world it went down. Uh, in some some way, so that's that's got to be good. Uh, less deforestation, also something that I didn't didn't know. Minus fifty six percent deforestation 
in t- this year in Amazonian countries like Brazil, for example. So uh, that's good. New nature conversation, conservation law uh, in the EU and in the US and probably elsewhere, but I'm in the EU. So uh, there's like no bee killing pesticides anymore. Uh, no products imported that destroy forests. Uh, there's a new biodiversity law, I think the first one in 30 years or something like this. And uh, it is now criminal to do wide scale environmental damage, uh, which should have been. Yeah, but I, I promised myself to not say but. So that's good. OK, it's now criminalized to completely destroy the environment. All right, less plastic. We thought that there would be uh, 50 to 300 million tons of plastic in the oceans. The latest um, is that there's probably more to 3.2 million tons of uh, in the oceans. And also, Japanese scientists discovered a plastic-eating bacteria, which is amazing because now all these uh, places where you have a bunch of plastic uh, around, uh, you know, could be just eaten by bacteria and then made into an actual natural place. All right. Rise of solar power, also surprising to me. Uh, it it went up globally by 100% in the last 18 months. You know, so there's 100% more. Uh, um, and this is the fastest growing energy technology in human history, right? 413 gigawatts of solar in this year. And uh, this makes it like ahead of trajectory, like like people did not expect this to go as fast as, as this. Let's see if I can make this go on again. Um, China, uh, so China is the largest carbon polluter, uh, but the emissions in from China have peaked. So now they're going down. Um, and uh, this is because again, they um, uh, solar and wind, they installed like 300 gigawatts of solar, which is the largest ever single year deployment of energy in our species history. Pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, they have, it's like, there's never going to be m- more emissions from China uh, than Today, it just like went up, of course, but now it's going down. Pretty cool. Uh, Europe is decarbonizing. Coal is only 17%, behind only 17% of Europe's electricity, which is cool. Uh, oil imports are down by 90%. Gas imports are down by 70%. Probably something to do with the imperial war that Russia wages on Ukraine. Um, but uh, But like, it's just good for... For everyone, like like uh, we were here in Europe, kind of scared about the effects on the economy and everything, and of course it does have an effect, but it's not like we're not, you know, uh, burning wood in <laughs> in uh, in the middle of the the room. So I think it will be fine. EVs are on the rise now. EVs are not going to be like the panacea of of everything uh, but it does make a big difference if you are if your motor is like 90 percent of have has 90 percent efficiency uh, compared to like a combustion motor uh, so even if you burn the same fuel but if you burn the same fuel in an actual uh, uh, like an electric plant uh, instead of inside a moving car uh, that's that's better for performance and for efficiency. And efficiency is good. So instead of uh, one EV in 25 cars, uh, which is from two years ago, now it's one EV for every five cars sold. And we now have cars that go 1,000 kilometers um, uh, in range. So that's good. Okay, I'm going to do that. <laughs> this... My my light is always going down. Anyway, material resources for clean energy are actually there. Uh, there was this a lot of, uh, you know, hand wringing about like, are we gonna have enough um, 
you know, lithium and cobalt and stuff like this. Yeah, we have more in dinner enough and uh, the prices are down. So it's fine. Geothermal energy is viable, as in like um, some company that does average cost of energy things uh, called Lazard said that, yeah, it's competitive with fossil gas, which is pretty good, like now. And there is a startup that is currently sending carbon-free electricity from geothermal in Nevada. So uh, that's got to be pretty good. Uh, sickle cell disease, which is something that is terrible and brings excruciating pain, is apparently treatable thanks to CRISPR, which is a technology that didn't exist. Didn't We didn't even know something like this could exist uh, 11 years ago. And now, like, it treats sickle cell disease. Uh, there are two new medicines that could treat or have big effect on people with Alzheimer's disease. Um, tuberculosis is the deadliest infectious disease in the world still. <laughs> Uh, but there were 100,000 fewer deaths uh, this year than, I mean, last year, 2022, compared to 2021. I don't know what the, this year's numbers are, but that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, so there's fewer unvaccinated children. Uh, the pandemic made this uh, number go up, unfortunately, but we're back to something like 14 million um, unvaccinated children in the world, the whole world. And most of them are, of course, in, in countries that uh, uh, are poor. Um, end of polio is in sight. Like, uh, there, uh, polio is currently only in seven districts of Pakistan and two provinces in Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, cool story, a Taliban <laughs> was like, w we don't care about eliminating polio uh, for a long time. And now they have reversed course and they are now decided that elimination is a priority. So go Taliban. <laughs> no, no, but seriously, like, okay, good. Like, I'm not a big fan of Taliban, but this is a good decision. <laughs> or this is, uh, yeah, a good reversal of a previous decision. Yes, please, let's end polio. Uh, there's fewer, 300 million fewer smokers today than 15 years ago. And... Uh, that's good for public health and for the smoker's health as well. Um, child mortality is down, um, uh, like in many, many countries uh, have reported this, uh, mostly in Africa and uh, just, yeah, Southeast Asia as well. And eight out of 10 births uh, have a professional or like a health professional present uh, compared to how many? Uh, six in 10 a generation ago. Cancer is now less deadly. Uh, uh, it's, uh, there's, the mortality rate is minus 5% less than it was in 2018. And there are some major breakthroughs in treatments, especially for colon cancer, skin cancer, bladder cancer, and cervical cancer. Um, so that's cool. And last but not least, there are endangered species that are actually recovering. And I there's too many to list them here, but it starts with African lion and goes through like Pacific green sea turtle and monarch butterfly, humpback whale, and it um, it ends with zebra shark. So just alphabetically. So. Yeah, I hope this helped a little bit. Um, uh, and I, I, uh, you know, th there's the, the article that I'm quoting from has like 66 different things um, that it lists. And I only had like 24. So uh, go ahead and read that article as well. or And just be merry and know that things are not going to hell uh only <laughs> they are sometimes some things are bad but some things are also good and there's hope all right
Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year because I am not going to make any videos during the holidays. Cheers.